You don't see them dying in the streets, and in most places, you don't see them dealing out in the open. But our investigation reveals that the city is in the worst drug crisis it's ever seen, no matter how you cut it. Cut it, cut it, cut it. It's been one major drug raid after another in recent weeks. Police and the feds busting up rings, allegedly selling everything from pills to crack and heroin, including the largest ever gang raid of 120 arrests. I went to the head of the New York DEA for answers. Last year in New York, we seized, seized over 1,000 kilos of heroin. That's basically one third of all the heroin seized in the United States by DEA. So it shows you how much. New York is ground zero. Hunt showed me a small fraction of the heroin that's been confiscated and will be destroyed and burned once the cases are closed. A kilo goes for fifty to seventy thousand dollars. Once it's cut and packaged, each little bag goes for six to ten dollars. The profit is mind-boggling in the millions. The cartels have basically flooded the market, so heroin is cheaper now than it really has ever been, and it's potent. Hunt tells me the majority of city heroin is smuggled across the poorest Mexican border in everything, including stuffed animals, shoes, clothing, even candy, then driven to the city just like it's fruit or furniture. Tractor trailers are the, the big way actually for the heroin to come up and the money to go back. A lot of them have been outfitted with uh, hidden compartments, traps. Once packaged at a heroin mill, the individual envelopes are stamped with brand names as a marketing tool. But there's no shortage of demand. Probably about 80 percent of new heroin users started with prescription drugs. And that's Percocet, oxycodone, hydrocodone. I also talk with special narcotics prosecutor Bridget Brennan, who handles the biggest drug cases, like a recent $5 million bust in an upper Manhattan drug mill located on a quiet residential street. A disturbing new trend. I've never seen an epidemic like this. It cuts across every neighborhood, every demographic. It cuts uh, across New York City everywhere. And then it spreads. The city health department tells us that drug overdose deaths continue to rise, with young adults being the most affected. Now let's find out what our panel has to say about this. Joining me, Dr. Darren Porcher. He's a former NYPD lieutenant and former undercover narcotics officer. He's also a criminal justice professor and TV and radio commentator. Dr. Darren, thanks so much for Thanks for having us. me, Lisa. We appreciate it. Also with us, you know him from his music and his performances and his tours, the one and only Graf. He's a hip-hop artist. His, his new album is Painkillers Reloaded. We're going to find out where that name comes from and all about that. He's currently on tour, and this summer he's going to be touring with Royce to 5'9". Thanks so much much for being with us, Thanks Graf. For having me. Thanks we really for having appreciate me. it. Also with us is Dr. David Ors. He's a general practitioner on the Lower East Side. He's also the founder and executive director of a tattoo removal program for ex-offenders and former gang members who are trying to get their tattoos removed so that they can get different jobs where you know it's not cool to have those on them. And he also has strong opinions about this drug epidemic. Dr. Ors, thanks so much for being Pleasure with us. Pleasure to be here. We appreciate it. Darren, I want to start with you on this. Why are we seeing so many drugs? Traditionally, we had a, an inordinately high spike in people that were using addicted to prescription drugs such as Percocet and Oxycodone. This was something that was coming from medical practitioners, whereas you had people that stole, let's say, the prescription book, things to that effect. And so what they did was they wrote scripts out and they just gave them, um, they gave these, these, these Oxycodones out to people arbitrarily. However, when we look at what the federal government is doing with the pharmaceutical industry, they're now hampering down, clamping down, and they're now causing these medical doctors to send these prescriptions electronically to the pharmacies as opposed to arbitrarily writing scripts. So what happened is now you had this abundant number of people that were addicted to these prescription medications and they're finding it's far easier for them to obtain heroin, which is at a much lower cost than to obtain the oxycodone and the Percocet. All and right. And then, and then Graf, what does that mean on the streets, you know, of, of what people are doing in terms of the hustle on the streets? I think if there's more product, then it's definitely going to increase the hustle outside, you know what I mean? But sometimes you gotta ask yourself, why is there an increase in, in general? Like are people, is it a stress thing? Like what what is it that people, are, why, why is the drug in more demand? Dr. David Ors, these drugs, for people who've never taken an opioid, mm -hmm. what do they do to you and why, why do you think people want them so much? They make you feel good. They make you feel calm, relaxed. Uh, you don't care about your problems. I mentioned before the show that when you're on um, morphine for pain, like a burn injury or some kind of traumatic injury, the people still feel the pain, they just don't care about it anymore. It's kind of fascinating. It de de disconnects. 
your worries and your concerns from your mind. So it's very soothing and relaxing. Now, if you are in constant state of pain, psychological pain all the time, you're going to be very attracted to morphine because it gives you a break that you don't get otherwise. If, you don't, if you're not in psychic pain constantly, then you wouldn't need to be taking morphine. Graf, what about in terms of the music industry in general, just the amount of drugs that's out there? We're hearing about it a lot in lyrics, but is it, is it that prevalent? I, I can't lie. Hip-hop definitely isn't drug-induced. Like, it's not, and I can't say that it's, it's causing kids to use drugs more, because that's like saying is life imitate art, art imitate life. I think the hip-hop in general is a reflection of what happens in the community. People are already twisted. These young kids, I'm in the street. Young kids are high. You know what I'm saying? They're twisted. But a lot of that comes from the fact they might be stressed. They might be have other problems that we got to work on besides just the drug use. It's like, why are you taking it? Some, some of it is not just recreational use. Some people are really in mental pain and anguish and feel like they need that. This is Street Soldiers. I'm your host, Lisa Evers. We're talking about the drug war and the drug epidemic. We'll be back with more right after this. There's way more drugs on the street now than ever before. Um, it, I don't think so. I know so. I want to come to the point of this, the whole cultural issue of where we see drugs. Right, Darren, but what about this? Is, is, there's way more drugs on the street now than ever before. Um, it, so? I, I don't think so. I know so. Uh, when I look at, we just look from the 70s to now, oh, there's yeah, 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 tremendous yeah, yeah. amounts of drugs that are coming into this. Um, Everything into is this, increased now. Yeah, I feel what you're saying. Just into this New York City metropolitan area, we have a lot of drugs coming into this. There. And a lot of times, a lot of us, we don't take responsibility for what these issues are. What do we do as a community? A lot of times... I don't know of a heroin of a poppy field in the United States. These poppy fields come from places like Afghanistan, and now Colombia has gotten more into the refinement process. What are we going to do? It's a two-front solution. We need to eradicate the, the the supply first of all. We have the demand over here, but we need to start. We need to eradicate these fields where poppies are grown in but places me, like but Afghanistan. Let, but let me stop you. Right, but let me stop you right there. About you're talking about the supply, but if you, how are you ever going to stop the supply if there's always a demand and the a demand can be the of demand the, for it. The demand can easily be, I shouldn't say easily, but it can be stemmed with education. Think in terms of what happened with the cigarette, the, t the tobacco campaign. When I was a kid, everyone smoked. Because they thought it right, was right, cool. Exactly. However, what happened was the federal government stepped in and they sued these tobacco industries and they forced them to put these ad campaigns and showing these people what, that were smokers. And didn't allow them to do ad campaigns at places where there were youth gatherings and Absolutely. concerts and that type I of think thing. the same holds true and it's necessary to educate this population here. But Dr. David, what about that? Did, do you think getting rid of these supplies is the answer? If there wasn't a demand, there wouldn't be a supply. I think people, you know, he said a lot of drugs are coming in the city. I think if they do it for money, that's why people deal drugs. No, they're totally doing it for money. And you I have know, the... But the, I, I, the, I, I, the people don't realize that. It's just for money. If, 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 it's if, a business. If you can make $20,000 a day selling avocados, it'd be a huge avocado problem. <laughs> you know? True. It's I just you a, it's cash, period cash. It's not about like, trying to get people addicted, trying to do, you know, ruin the society, trying to torture, shoot kids, and none of that. It's all about cash. And um, so, um, uh, I gave this example before. If you have one person addicted to heroin, and you gave them, for example, this is hypothetical, uh, heroin lollipops, which there is such a thing for cancer patients. Let's say you had a heroin addict and you brought him into a, this lobby here. You know, people are Googling right now heroin lollipops. Yeah, it's out there. And then you get you give him the heroin lollipop. Now, I, 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 Darren, I discuss this and I agree with everything he says. And I have a third prong unconnected to his, and his are equally important. And that is to reduce the demand by just giving people morphine. If someone's a morphine addict, you just simply give them morphine, and the goal is not to help them, not to make them better, and not to um, do anything good for them. The goal is very sp specific, and that is to stop them from using street drugs. This is Street Soldiers. I'm your host, Lisa Evers. Coming up, a hundred gang members, alleged gang members, were arrested. Part of their operation was drug dealing and drug sales. How long before those spots are taken by other people, or did this bust really put a dent in the drug trafficking and some of the public housing developments in the Bronx? We'll find out what our guests have to say about that and more on these treatment options that's coming up. Save at the fire, man. We've we'll been working, spilling all out the frying pan. Too much lead on in your diet plan. Run up on a plug, thinking you flyers, and you're going to get more than a body slam. You're going to need more than a spot exam. Young shooter with the new chrome. Beat your ass until you too tall. Get the number to the trappy How you get the number to the new phone? Young that's Trap Phone Ringing. That's off Graf's new album, Painkillers Reloaded. Graf, Trap Phone Be Ringing. Right. What, what was the whole inspiration behind that? Well, that song is really just a feel good record, to say the truth. And when I say trap, I'm talking about, I like to try to generalize. I mean, specifically, yeah, Trap Phone Ringing, you know, it's a trap. But when we say trap, 
however you get your money is when it's ringing. You could be a barber in the barber shop. You say I'm in the trap. Your phone ringing. You, you still you you're making your income. Hey, okay, Greg, let me ask you a question. I, right? I just I, I asked you. Yeah, right. We we talked earlier about the education. I understand that there's a certain component of music that people like to listen to. Mm -hmm. But do you think at one point as an artist you do take a level of responsibility for what people hear, in connection with listening to this music? And I love hip hop music. Okay, right. so I'm not taking a shot against hip hop music. But at the same token, we get to a point where it's, it, we glow glorify the, the, the lifestyle that we're trying to get away from. And I'm not telling you that you got to make records that need to be played in the church, but is it safe to say that you can possibly produce something that would be, that can be good music, but doesn't affiliate itself with drug use, gun violence, and things to that effect? I think me specifically as an artist, I have a, a well-balanced uh, project that talks to every aspect and every facet of what we go through in the urban community. So it's like, it's not only the trap forming and you get, I got a record on my album talking about suicide. Like I, okay. I, wrote, I wrote it from a first person of a, of a young girl who's contemplating suicide. At the end of the record, unfortunately, she does commit suicide because that is a rare. I will say this much. So I don't balance. like your music. I love your music, okay? But at the same token, I'm an adult. But now also, let, let, let's rewind this. How about a kid that's maybe 16? 16, 15 years old. Right. They listen to your music and then they say, look, I'm going to get me some oxy, some per Percocets, and I'm going to roll on the block with, with, with my gun. I want to bust my gun. And I'm not saying that that's what your focus is, right. but we just go back to the, the, the component. But what about the, the kids? The hook, about a hook education? is designed to be right. catchy. What about what he's saying? I, I, would, I would hope that You know, for a kid, like the hook is very catchy. Right. I would hope that he wouldn't hear that and run in the street and do that. But you got to like understand, that, that would, the kids, they are going to hear this. That would be he, terrible. But then I would hope that he hears everything else and also here when I speak to him. Let's talk about what happened in the Bronx. This, right. uh, this arrest, you have in, in a couple of public housing developments, a hundred alleged gang members, a l laundry list of crimes in the indictment, including the murder of a 92-year-old woman, murder of uh, other murders that they, they are accused of being responsible for, right. all around this drug dealing, basically drug bazaar, anything you want, they're going to get for you if they don't already have it. Is this right. going to change anything for the people living there? I think so. If you arrest a hundred people from one particular area, that's 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 creating a, a disruptive behavior in, a, in a, any community. It's gonna make it safer, especially if you kill somebody that's 92 years old. You said that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? So old people should, I mean, elderly can feel more safe in that environment. Yeah, I think that would affect that. From a police perspective, um, it, it, it does put a dent in temporarily. However, there needs to be a sustainment piece in connection with this. We can't just go in and wipe out, let's say, 126 people and say, all right, we can sit back, we've done our job. It's something that has to be an ongoing process. When they're high now on four heroin I lollipops you know, so. and they walk outside onto that. the street and they're hanging out, it's going to look like a zombie zone. And I gave you the example of so, right? the cigarette campaign Listen, was. the idea is to take the smoke, customer. Smoke, people do, but it's hold on, we're going to talk we're gonna, yeah, Hold on, we're going to talk about the The idea of the center is to take the customer away from the street dealer, okay. period. Has no other function whatsoever. Period. Just take the customer away from them. Okay. Once we have the customer in our place, then we can decide how to handle that customer. As weeks and months go by, you'll get some that want to get rehab. You'll get some who want to stay high. Right. One is psychotic. Drop one is, out. Uh, no, one's uneducated. One has brain damage from the, the war. They got it in the head. Well, uh, Post-traumatic stress people. Like I told you, it'd be a big variety, a variety right. pack of people. And you can treat them because now you have them. Right. But you didn't have them before. They're out wandering around on their own, loose, taking drugs in the street, which are fentanyl, poison. And some attacking people, which they're, we've they're seen. They're doing violence and crime. Listen, right now, here's the, this is your failure going on now. The addicts do crime. They do violence. They do prostitution, human trafficking. Um, you're giving an enormous amount of money to very bad people. They use that money to billions and billions of dollars to fund wars all over the world. Now, so American drug addicts are funding war all over the world, buying weapons and guns. All the wars are funded by heroin. It's called narco dollars. But you got to remember, dumb drugs are getting here. Not that, the, the drugs are the community, they're not created by the community, they're getting here. Right, that's shipped in. Government, whatever, they're getting here another kind they're of way. That's, that's a whole other document. That's a whole, that's a whole, yeah, that's, yeah, a whole yeah, yeah. that's really a documentary no, no. because of, right. of no, no, how no, they're the, coming. The, the drugs are shipped in, but the point is that all this, you they're know, smuggled you in. Ha if there was no 
if there was no money in it, nobody would do it. Exactly. But let me ask you this. Okay, let's come back to the demand piece. It should be a medical problem. Not a, it should be a medical problem, not a criminal problem. Okay, but the, but the everyone everyone agrees. I think even in the law enforcement community too, the, the there's the enforcement aspect, there's the crime aspect, and you would still have it, that for people who don't use the centers. But if you don't, but if you don't deal with the demand issue, that they law enforcement says you can't solve this problem with a you I can't just arrest your way. There, there's no more demand. If right. I give a guy, if I give a person, if, I'm not sure about 15 year olds at EDM concerts, but a 25, 30 year old addict, like an addict, an addict, an addict, addict. If I give them morphine. I know thousands of these people for free and other things they want, they will go do that. So we should just give drugs out for no, free? No, because you're, saving, what you're, you're not giving, what you're doing is stopping them getting shot, stabbed, and doing crime. You, have to put, you can't let this continue. I disagree. Darren, what about I, dis that? I, I totally disagree. I, I understand and I think that you have great intentions here. And it may work in some settings. However, overall, when we talk the, the, um, the issuance of drugs to younger kids, a lot of these kids are as young as eight, nine years old. And giving them a lollipop for, for morphine, I'm just really against well, minors, that. Now, keep in mind, keep in mind. Can be a you're the medical professional, and I'm the uh, I'm the legal expert. We give we give we give, but, we give but, but, insulin. But at the same token, yeah, but they're not getting just, high from that. I don't buy in. For I don't buy into this. We give kids drugs all the time. Okay, but let me ask you this: in, ter in terms of the demand issue, because you, you're 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 talking about this approach with the heroin or the it's morphine. It's done in Portugal. It's done in, Portugal has the whole country now like this. They have centers that give out morphine, and they've had a 30, 40, 50 percent in crime in the first year. Really? Because yes. let me ask okay. you this. That's what, what is your take on just the education of these people from K through 12? I'm saying that's a separate thing. How about, but let's talk the about the, let's talk about the demand. Let's talk about the education. The education is critically important. I but just separate. think that it should be mandatory blocks, like how we have math, science. Yes, please. We should have a block. I, I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. But what, what about? But you're still going to. Okay, but what about the what about the education? I agree. I agree. I agree. But you're still going to have addicts. Addicts. Addiction has to do with thirst, hunger. But what about the next generation that's coming after these kids that are eight, nine? Ten it's fantastic old. because a lot of the people who sell drugs are drug addicts themselves. When you take away their, when you take these people off the street, you have a large component of these people that are drug addicts. I'll agree so with that. So if you take the drug, the drug, if you take the customers away from the street, into these centers by hook or by crook, we'll discuss for hours how to do that. Right. But let's say you could do it. Right. Then they're not on the street selling drugs. That's an army of salespeople. In theory, what he's saying is, it, 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 I don't know how to apply that, but in theory, I get what you're saying. Okay, but Graf, what about a public awareness campaign? What about a thing where you know there, there's a lot of people that. A lot of kids they, they look upon regular cigarettes. It's like having a public awareness campaign of thirst. The new generation coming up of children. They kind of do, what about they kind of don't. I mean, I see the commercials for it too, and I, I would hope it helps. It worked with tobacco use. It did. It I did. think it did a really a good job in terms of the reduction. Tobacco, so now, granted, you we didn't that? cure. We didn't cure People tobacco still, use. It's still, However, it's, still it's something it's still that did work. But a lot of them are smoking weed and think that's okay. It's still the number one killer. No, but I tell you what, cigarettes. Education. I tell you, great cigarettes. Cigarettes and alcohol. I agree. I tell you two things that work. Education will definitely work in some sense. I don't think it would. It won't take away. I agree. Demand, education but it will too. People so they'll understand. And another thing too, if you can create education where you teach them how to learn how to learn and 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 for, to get into the better job situations where maybe in that particular job they get a good paycheck, but then you have to get blood tested. Then they might be like, well. I'm not going to do this because I want to keep my job and I make good money here, so let me do this. And that could be attached to education, too. Like, if you if you combine that with good jobs. Yeah, but the education, well, the education I, I, is just... I'm, all, I'm, I'm completely for education. I, again, I agree, I agree, I agree. But some will get through that net. Right. You'll still have one drug yeah, user. You, you well, 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 what effect anywhere. would this, have had, what effect would this have had? For example, we've had an ongoing problem with, with K2 users on 125th Street. You're talking Park about Ever. having advertising to get rid of poverty. It just doesn't work. You can't advertise yeah, poverty way. You got, you got to attack. You, you know can't go, I'm going to put a poster up and say, hey, people, don't be poor anymore. That's not going to happen. That's not going to make them not poor what anymore. We doing? No, but if you have people that... that made, same with addicts. You can't make them go away with advertising. Graph, final thought. I think it still comes down to how kids actually feel. If you're talking about young kids, recreational use, it's about, how, it's about connecting with them and talking to the kids. That's it, how they really feel, what they really want. That's more about education. That's it. And that, that, part of it is education. But I know a lot of small... My man is like a borderline genius. He's still popping pills and sipping lean. He just wants to feel differently. He wants to feel different than what he feels right now. It's just you got to connect with people and figure out what the issues are. Whether it's financial, it's sometimes it's not even always financial. Some kids got money and they still want to feel right. And it can be all, feel exactly. So it's just, different types of stresses. You got to connect with them on a mental level. It's not, it's just not surface. Agree. Right. Right. Agree 100%. Okay. 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 I wanna, I hit the right. Good. Agree 100%. I want to thank all of you for being with us for this episode of Street Soldiers. Dr. Darren Porcher, Graf, Dr. David Ors. Remember, use your mind. It's your best weapon. I hope it's your only weapon. Let's push for peace.